Hey guys, welcome to Bedtime Stories. I'm Brad. I'm Brie. And this week's edition is from the Wrestling USA magazine, October 1992. The interview is a superstar interview with the macho man, Randy Savage. Let's dig on into it. I'll read the intro, then Braden will be the interviewer as I play Randy Savage. Oh, he's going to oogie it. For many months, it appeared the career of wrestling's reigning macho man, Randy Savage, was finished. No regal ring entrances, no pomp and circumstance, no contending for the world title. Instead, all Savage had to look forward to was uncertainty and doubt. At WrestleMania 7 in 1991, Savage lost a loser must retire bout to the Ultimate Warrior. Although the defeat was crushing, the post-match aftermath was a turning point in Savage's always turbulent life. Savage was abandoned by sensational Sherry, but taken back by his former manager, the gorgeous Elizabeth. Five months later, Savage and Elizabeth married in an in-ring ceremony at SummerSlam 1991, but the joyous ceremony did little to appease, to appease the former world champion's fear that his WF career was, for all intents and purposes, terminated. Savage marked time by becoming a color commentator, and it was in that role that he began a verbal war with sinister Jake the Snake Roberts. In November, Roberts baited Savage from the broadcast booth into the ring, then proceeded to allow his 15-foot King Cobra to gnaw on Savage's arm. For that frightening moment, it appeared everything was over for Savage, but the snake bite marked a new beginning for the superstar. After the attack, WF President Jack Tunney reinstated Savage as a wrestler, and Savage dominated Roberts in a series of matches. A strong contender once again, Savage was giving a title shot at Ric Flair at WrestleMania 8 on April 5th in Indianapolis. This was a refreshed and hungry Savage that was heading into WrestleMania, and Flair knew it. The Nature Boy tried to anger Savage by revealing doctored photos of himself and Elizabeth together. But the ruse only made Savage more determined to regain the title, and although Savage garnered some criticism for pulling Flair's tights during the pinfall, his victory for his second world championship was among the finest matches a truly outstanding career. Following WrestleMania 8, Savage met the press. The new champion took some hard questions in typically outspoken fashion, and now you are there to share in the victory celebration. How do you feel, Randy? Now, I could say I'm the once and present World Wrestling Federation champion. That's only a small part of the way I feel right now. It's just a tip of the iceberg about the way I feel about Ric Flair. The fact that he called himself the real world champion all the time, just kind of like a bad deal with every person who was ever part of the WBF. When he got to the big leagues and shot off his mouth, and then the Royal Rumble backed up what he said, only now can I say that I must be the real WF champion. And if he chokes on that, so be it. <laughs> Is this a bigger thrill than the first time you won the WWF title? Much bigger thrill than the first time. Once is not enough. How, how is your knee? Is there any damage from Ric Flair's figure four? Any leg legitimate damage? It's not only the knee. You've heard of the old term, Charlie Horse. In that situation, it was a Charlie Horse that started it off, and the figure four put the pressure on the knee. I think that I'm okay, because I was walking on it, and it just stiffened up a while worse than it was before. But just the thrill of being out there got me through th that particular time. If I made it through, it wasn't because he wanted me to. It was because I was lucky enough to make it through on my own. Will you give Hulk Hogan a title shot? Understand that fact. Yeah that this is the macho man Randy Savage talking to you. Understand the bottom line, that I am the WF champion and Ric Flair is not. You understand? What about when you pulled Ric Flair's tights during the pinfall? Whether I did or whether I didn't, Mr. Perfect is not perfect and neither is the macho man. I've soared with the eagles, I've slithered with the snakes, and I've been everywhere in between. Nobody ever said that my halo was on straight, but nobody else is either. All right. So when you point a finger at somebody, you have to point it right back at you. Too bad. But are you going to give Hogan a title shot? I'll tell you what. Hulk Hogan is a friend of mine. The best thing I can say about Hogan is that he's one of the mega powers. Uh, ha, remember that? And whether this was Hogan's last match, I'll tell you this. He's a friend. 
If he needs a tag team partner, the Macho Man will be there. If he wants to come after the gold, Macho Man will be there too. And the type of competitor that Hogan is, I know he feels the same way. Hogan and I have had battles in the front of the camera and a few behind the camera. If you dig where I'm coming from, read between the lines. But out of that, forged in steel, is our friendship. I think out of something bad comes something good. Hulk Hogan, for all your Hulkamaniacs and for you, the best of luck to you. Because the WF and Hulk Hogan are synonymous. So who is your number one contender? <clears throat> number one contender? You know, I don't even know. That's for other people to figure out. How about Sid Justice? Sid Justice? That could happen. That would be nice. Whatever. Is there anybody you'd like to defend against? Lex Luger? Sensational <clears throat> Sherry? I don't think I could beat Sensational Sherry. But I know that Elizabeth can. <laughs> Did you have any words with Sherry during WrestleMania? Not at all. The past of the past. Uh-huh. Very good. But I want to say something about Ric Flair. I never felt this way before, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Satisfaction guaranteed. You don't always get what you want, but you get what you need. I know this belt is what makes Ric Flair tick. He doesn't have it anymore. That's okay. Part of the joy I have is not only having the WF belt back, but also the fact that he doesn't have it. If he wants to come back to me, that's fine. I just got a piece of what I want, just a piece of the pie, and I like the whole pie. What do you think about the Ultimate Warrior returning to the WWF? I'm still in a state of shock about that. He's the only one that's beaten the Macho Man, Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan. Let him come back, yeah. That's hit right there. I have a lot of respect for him as an athlete. That's wild. The WWF is where the major leagues is, and that hip with me, bring them all. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Are you going to defend the title in Japan? I'm leaving in a couple of days with Elizabeth. We're going to Milan, it, Italy, and about nine other places, Scotland, Germany. I didn't realize I was going to be carrying some heavier baggage, but that's okay. With me, just hop on the bandwagon because we got a long way to go. Do you do you look at WrestleMania, hey. WrestleMania 8 as the end of an era? You're right. Hulk Hogan, I compare him to Babe Ruth in baseball. I get chills up and down my spine when I say that, whether he's wrestling again or whether he doesn't. Even though I'm the WWF champion right now, I'm lying if I didn't say that I respect him one million percent. He's an athlete all the way, which we all well know. But the things he's done for kids, on camera you've seen, but as part of the mega powers, I've seen what he's done off camera. Every chance he gets to help the kids, that's where it's at with Hulk Hogan. Not only his own, but all the kids all over the world. He's adopted them all. I like to say that everybody can learn from Hulk Hogan. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I can't beat him one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Now that, you're ha ha now that you have the title, what's your goal? What's coming up? Well, to keep it as long as I can, naturally. To keep it away from Ric Flair? Can you go two of three falls with Flair? Sure. I can beat him two straight. That's fine. No problems there at all. First of all, I want to get my leg a little better because I'm sure he wouldn't want to beat me if I wasn't a million percent. That's a lie. <laughs> He's a cheap shot artist. But guess what? So am I. Did I say that? I guess I did. Did, did the match against Flair go pretty much the way you planned? No, it didn't. I got a lot of respect for him as an athlete now. Before I went into the ring, I was worried about self-destructing before I got there. He wanted to get under my skin, and he did it. I congratulate him for that. But the way we've been dogging me on the tube, you know, to say the least, Elizabeth is a big part of my life. He couldn't have hurt me any worse, or Elizabeth, or her mother, or her grandmother and grandfather. He just didn't understand that you can't do that to people these days. This is the 90s, and people are going to stand up, and they're going to fight. I think he realizes now that I am ready to fight. How about you and Elizabeth? You were talking about Hogan and the kids earlier. Is there any possibility we, we'll be seeing any macho mon mon munchkins anytime soon? Ooh, macho babies. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, I've been on the road so much. I've got to keep that macho reputation happening. I like to have nine kids and have a baseball team and beat the Cardinals with a pennant. What, what kind of workouts do you 
take part in to keep in shape? Very good question. I do a little bit of everything. I think nowadays, anybody who makes it to the top better not specialize in just one thing. Just all the weight lifting or all the power lifting just isn't going to get it. When you get past that 20 minute mark, that's when the aerobics come in. I've got a little bit of everything coming to me and a lot of heart. What do you say to all the critics that have been on the news during the past couple of weeks talking about steroid use in the, in the WWF? Well, a lot of it sounds to me like sour grapes from people from the past. As far as steroids go, I'll be very, very honest with you. I've experimented with anabolic steroids myself in the past. Don't take them anymore. It's been a long time since I took them. Took them when it was legal. No wrestler, no promoter, and no doctor ever told me to take them. I came out of baseball and experimented a little bit with myself. I'll tell you right now, and I'll tell all the kids out there, it's like putting poison in your body. Besides, it gave me one heck of a case of PMS. If you want to take a shortcut to the top, you're going to run out of steam. And that comes from the macho man, Randy Savage. You ask me a question, I'll give you a straight answer. And there we go, guys. That's this week's edition of Bedtime Stories with Brad and Braden from the Wrestling USA Magazine, October 1992. You can check us out on YouTube at Brad's Collection and Braden's Toy Show. We will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.